Hello friends, of late many people from my online family have been asking me and they are concerned, hey Vijay, will rising crude oil prices and to a certain degree even natural gas prices impact the ongoing equity market rally or will there be a dark cloud cast over our rally? Fair enough, I understand your concerns and I want to address this issue in a 360 degree worldview manner, which you know me so long for. So first of all, we will examine why oil and gas prices are rising, whether the oil and gas price rise is sustainable and if it is not, when can you expect prices to come down and whether the equity markets are under any threat whatsoever. So let's dive right in and We'll basically take a look as to the cause and effect theory. Why are oil and gas prices rising? Number one, there is a deliberate attempt by the OPEC plus members to cause an artificial man-made shortage by output cuts. You started with the Russians cutting output by, by the Saudis. I'm sorry. Saudis starting to cut output by 500,000 or half a million barrels in the month of June. In July, a similar amount of output cut was announced by uh, Russia. They are calling it voluntarily output cuts. But make no mistakes, this 1 million barrel cut in output is to drive prices higher. And this is one of the many output cuts that they have put in place since 2022. The other reason is the falling US dollar index. On your chart right now, what you are witnessing is the US dollar index or the Dixie as it is known. Note how it has fallen two and a half percent in the last four days of this week itself and 3.14 percent in the month of July up to Friday. That is 14th of July in the morning as I record this video. But do note that the US dollar index and the US dollar by itself is although the invoicing currency, which means you buy commodities, you basically pay for them in US dollar terms. Off late, more and more oil trade is being conducted in non US dollar denominated currencies. So you're seeing Euro, you're seeing Yuan, you're basically seeing countries having bilateral trade in their respective currencies. So the dollar is increasingly witnessing a smaller share of the global oil trade. As a matter of fact, its share has come down to approximately 59% as the invoicing currency, where it was 72% half a decade ago. Now, why is OPEC plus, which is OPEC and certain non OPEC members, primarily Russia, boosting the price? It is because they want to raise revenues. Many of these countries, especially Middle East and North Africa, have nothing else to sell, especially in the Gulf states. What do they have? They have oil and gas, probably dates, which is Khajur, to sell and a lot of sand and nobody wants to buy sand. So this is the only and primary source of revenue for them. They want to drive up the prices and their desperation is understood and noted. But will it really work? I don't think so. I for one have been telling you since 2021 that I do not subscribe to a super cycle hypothesis in commodities, especially in the energy segment for the simple reason that I believe the cure for high commodity prices is high commodity prices itself. You see, when commodity prices go up, the producers and exporters raise up their output, increase the supply in the market that caps the prices and drags them down all over again. Unlike equities, where supply is limited due to paid up capital being fixed in commodities, both supply and demand are elastic. So you need to understand the mindset difference between commodities and equities. The other thing why I think where uh, the artificial boosting of prices will not help is because 
you might rig up the price by curtailing output and creating shortages in the market. But remember why you want to raise prices because you want to raise cash. Raising cash is done by selling, not by holding. When you try to sell that output again, the prices will come down. You are increasingly living in a world where electric vehicles, wind energy, solar power, nuclear power are basically witnessing a higher degree of share in the global energy sweepstakes. The US is now turning into a net exporter of oil and gas it's always been exporting. Guyana as a new entrant in the oil sweepstakes has struck oil and started exporting fairly seriously. In 2022, they exported 297,000 barrels per day, translating to 101 million barrels in the calendar year. Turkey has struck oil and gas and it's a fairly large discovery. They are expected to start producing by end of 2025. So there's more oil coming in. Uh, uh, Norway has seen an election uh, uh, recently about six quarters ago and the new government is very conducive to raising output rather than curtailing greenhouse gases and raising a green uh, footprint. So they are disregarding the uh, 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 move to go zero uh, in zero emissions and they are raising their uh, hydrocarbon output. The Saudis and the Kuwaitis have jointly uh, started to bury the hatchet in the Wafra and Al Khafji oil fields, which were on the disputed border uh, uh, areas. And these oil fields are now generating crude oil, which is coming into the export market. The United Arab Emirates has also started raising the supply sharply. And you will remember the sharp words that were exchanged between the Saudi and the UAE oil ministers a few quarters ago. Russia itself needs cash for their war in Ukraine and ultimately will have to start selling more and more. In the OPEC itself, there are some members who are willful and chronic delinquents, means they violate OPEC quotas and sell more than they are supposed to. Amongst these are Mexico because of their world famous Hacienda hedge in uh, uh, oil uh, options market, which covers them from any losses. Iraq, Iran, Venezuela, Libya, amongst others. Do note that Qatar and Ecuador have basically quit OPEC. So they don't feel bound to be limited by OPEC quotas anymore. The Chinese economic recovery is very, very feeble right now. It has stalled. So China was supposed to be the largest consumer of oil and that is not happening in a hurry. Let's now come to gas. Now gas prices are a different ball game altogether. They are not risen much as much as oil, but okay, there are people who are worried that gas prices may also result in problems that were seen in 2021 and 22. But here, let me assure you of what is happening. Now gas is consumed primarily by Western Europe and it is also consumed by Asia. Now, Western Europe prices are, are, are denoted by the Dutch Tritle Transfer Facility. It is available as a free chart on TradingView and the Asian uh, price is denoted by Japanese Korean marker, Japan Korea marker, which again is available as a free chart on TradingView. You will see that these prices have not risen as much as they used to before winter a couple of years ago. As a matter of fact, Gas inventories in Europe as on 4th of July 2023 are at 889 terawatt hours. Natural gas stocks were up by 246 terawatt hours, which is far above the 10 year average. Storage sites are full to the extent of 79% as on 4th of July 2023 whereas the 10 year average is 60%. So we are 19% above capacity. Inventories in uh, Europe are estimated to reach 1,211 terawatt hours before drawdown begins in the winter and winter normally uh, sets in on 1st of October every year. 
Look at the other uh, 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 market indicators. The front month futures have fallen 85% from their peak reached in 2022. Remember, this was the time in uh, February when uh, the Russians invaded uh, uh, Ukraine. They attacked Ukraine. Futures for gas deliveries in October 2023 are at a discount of 12 euros per megawatt hour to April 2024 levels. Why am I quoting October and April? Because October is the onset of the winter. Why am I quoting April? Because come vernal equinox in March and win uh, winter ends and summer starts and prices of gas collapse suddenly. The volatility is so high that in winter months, gas prices by veteran traders like me are called the widowmaker trade. Many people have lost their shirts and, and many uh, uh, traders go bankrupt in this period. Now, the reason why gas prices should come down over a period of time is Iran is raising output because it needs money. Remember, it's undergoing a lot of economic sanctions. It's the fourth largest reserve holder of gas. Qatar wants to raise output by up to five times its capacity that it had in 2019, which is expected to happen by 2025. Remember, Qatar is out of OPEC, so it is not bound by any quotas. Australia, USA, Russia and Saudi Arabia, along with uh, United Arab Emirates, are also boosting gas exports. The Saudis are developing a super giant gas field at Jafura and they are spending 108 billion US dollars to see to it that output reaches peak capacity in double quick time. Now, the reason why prices of oil and gas might go up oil, because I told you OPEC plus is boosting oil, but gas has a different story. In 2020, polar vortex hit the uh, North American uh, shores in winter. This is when uh, the uh, North Pole experiences bitter weather. Gas prices jumped through the roof. Hedge funds came in. And because they got greedy, they booked a lot of storage space, underground storage tanks, and they made a killing in 2021. Unknown to them, 2021 saw gas prices go up, not just because of winter, but because the Russians had plans to attack Ukraine. So they made many times more than their investments. But in 2022, they lost money because prices came down and crashed through the floor. In 2023, these hedge funds might just try to pump the prices of gas only to dump it later. So this is nothing but a pump and dump. Now, I've given you my reasons as to why I feel from a 360 degree worldview point of view, why gas and oil prices will not remain firm for too long. Yes, there is a hurricane season in the US between uh, July and October every year when oil and gas prices are high. Yes, there is winter coming in on 1st October, but come summer uh, vernal equinox in March, gas prices should come down sharply because heating demand contracts. So I feel that this is just a blip on the radar for a patient investor in equities. I do not foresee a long term shadow being cast by oil and gas prices on the equity markets. This is the way a 360 degree worldview investor should think and this is how I want my online family to remain assured. Till we meet again in my next, this is Vijay Bambwani signing off for now, not before reminding you to click like on this video if you liked what you saw. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. And in the comment segment, do let me know how my videos help you become better traders. And please, please share my videos with smart traders like yourselves so I can reach across to a wider audience. Thank you for your patience. See you in my next video. Have a very, very profitable trade ahead. Bye-bye.